Hallelujah. God is still on the throne. He always will be. I praise God. I want to welcome those that are watching via our various things. <laughs> Website, Facebook, YouTube, World Christian Media. Praise God. Uh, we pray that you're blessed by the word of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is good. Um, just one other prayer request. Uh, I, I won't mention the person's name because uh, I didn't get get permission to share it, but uh, they're struggling with COVID in their house right now, too. seems like every place is struggling with COVID right now, but uh, we pray that uh, God will heal her and keep her. She has a big, big job to do within her household, so she's the last person you want to see sick. Praise God. Amen. So this morning, um, we're going to get our, our first reading from the book of John. Chapter 18, verses 33 through 38, and this is during the trial of Jesus before he is crucified, and uh, I believe this is the second time he appeared before Pilate, or the first, the first time? I think it's the first time he appeared before Pilate, but uh, uh, there's a series of, of a conversations that goes on here, and then at the end is what my message today is about. What, what Pilate, what actually what Pilate says, hallelujah. So in First John chapter 18, verses 33 through 38. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of, the, of, the of me? Of course, the people, the, uh, the high priest and all those guys have been Barking in his ear that they wanted just Jesus out of the way because he claims to be king. And there is no king but Caesar, as they proclaimed. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Then Pilate said, saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Of course, that just steered him up more. And they eventually, Pilate had to succumb to them and crucif had Jesus crucified. So what is truth? That is a question that I guess is pertaining in our day to day uh, pretty much. What is truth? Uh, here, the creator of all things, as Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto me. Unto the Father, but by me. But when you come to truth, people are saying, what is truth? Even when you talk about who Jesus is in, in our church and in, in other churches, all the same, they say, what makes you so think that you have the truth? Well, we have this. And we go by this only. It's not our opinion on what God says. It's not our idea. Right? We didn't get the idea of who Jesus is from a book. God from God himself, his word. And if you go outside the word, then you start getting into the mire of what is truth. So I'm going to try to tackle a couple of truths this morning. I don't think I'll get through all of them, so I'm going to kind of watch the time a little bit. So I don't, if, if I see someone nodding off, Mike, hallelujah, I'll know it's time to stop. So there's really three I want to talk about this morning. I don't know if I'll get to the last one, but. There will be another Sunday we could do that. Huh? Amen. Amen. He's awake. Hallelujah. So a lot of people, when you talk about truth, they want to know it. You remember, who, what was that uh, from, the, from that one movie? It says, uh, you, wouldn't, you can't handle the truth. And that, that's pretty much how our world is today. If you tell the truth and, and you look at our media, Do you trust them? Do you trust politicians to tell you the truth? 
Do you trust preachers to tell you the truth? <laughs> Dave's coughing. <laughs> Some of you do. And, and I, I, I don't watch too many or listen to too many other preachers on, on that because they disturb me when, when they start talking about things and, and I know it's not biblically sound. They'll get up there and they don't even have a Bible and they'll start just talking about things. They really it doesn't have no counts, you know. It's not connected to the Word of God. Or they use one verse, and that'll be the. They can preach an hour on one verse. Wow. I can't do that. I need the Word of God to support what I'm saying. So some people wouldn't know the truth of the bit of in the you know where, right? We try to share truth, and their face, their eyes are blinded. It seems. In our world today, truth is hard to find. If you think about it, that's been a problem all through history. Remember the first lie that Satan did? He asked Eve, he said, you, you, when, when she told him about the fruit of the tree of knowledge, if we eat of it, God said we will die. What did, what did Satan tell her? You shall not surely die. So from then, the lies have been throughout history. It hasn't changed but in our time, and I think it has accelerated. For in 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3, it tells us of, of a time that we live in. If you don't think we're living in the last days, I don't know what else truth I can tell you. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Have we seen that today? Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having in their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. Wow, is that a picture of our day? It seems like it, everyone you know, they're living together. They're not married. And commanding to abstain from meats. I love my meat. Which God had created to be received. If you're a vegetarian, praise God. God bless you. I don't know what's wrong with you, but... <laughs> Uh, what God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. We in this church know the truth. We know Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive a gift of the Holy Ghost. And that promise is unto you and to your children. Amen. Look at all those old, most of those kids are now filled with the Holy Ghost, right? And been baptized in Jesus' name. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? It didn't stop with Scott and, what's your name? <laughs> it didn't stop with them. It continues on and on and on and on. Praise God for that. Hallelujah. We need generations to follow us to have the uh, truth. But one of my cons biggest concerns of our modern days and is what it seems that prophets have come out of the woodwork, haven't they? You can't look anywhere on Facebook or some of the other searches and, and not run into some guy proclaiming what is coming. And a lot of them, you know, I was sharing that with somebody on Facebook just the other day, and he said, well, you got to remember, you know, Isaiah's prophecy didn't happen for 700 years when he prophesied of Jesus coming. I said, we don't have 700 years. And most of these guys that are prof, you know, saying prophecies are referring to the time we live in. A lot of it's around Trump, wasn't it? You know, they all prophesied that he was going to be, next, be president, be reelected again. And, and I think he was reelected again, but through some shenanigans, it didn't happen. And then when he wasn't elected, they were all talking about, well, just wait, springtime is coming. That's, that's a sign of things changing, you know. Well, springtime came, gone. He still wasn't changed. You know, God has a purpose for things. And sometimes we deserve what we get. If we have a nation that is not praying to God, not believing in God, and, and I remember this, that, that thing I showed up earlier at the beginning, it says that only 11% of the people are reading their Bible daily. And it's down like 29% read it at all. So people aren't getting their truth from here. If you're getting your truth from the TV station, from television shows, from movies, your vision of things is going to be distorted. 
you know, with this Omicron thing, you know, I, again, I, I, we know COVID is real. I think almost everyone in here has experienced COVID in their own life, and some of it was, wasn't very much fun, was it, Kim? <laughs> Amen, it wasn't. But we can see that, it, and if we realize that what, what they're using it for, they're not using it for, they don't, they don't want a cure. They want power is the only thing they're after. And they're using this as a political thing. Yeah, but elections coming up this year might be very interesting. What's going on again? Hallelujah. So, and I believe in the office of prophets. I believe in prophets. I believe in prophecy. Um, Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 3. It says, There arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or wonder. And the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he speak, spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. See, this is the different. Even their prophecy comes to pass. But if they're telling you to, to follow something else but Jesus Christ, what does the Bible tell us? Which, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet or the dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth. You to know either you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, even the Bible is so far, if you have a prophet that prophesies and it doesn't come to pass, you're supposed to do something to them. Stone them. But yeah, I would, I would think these guys proclaiming the word that they have the mind of God today, if they knew that, if we hold too true to that, it would be a little more careful with what they're saying. Now, I've had the privilege to be, to have one person. Now, I've had people, has anybody had people prophesy over them? What do they tell you? You're going to be rich? <laughs> You're going to have lots of money? That seems to be the main thorough or main subject of most of these prophets. I was told that, too. Oh, man. You, and, and what do they usually tell you? Well, you got a soul into that prophecy. So you got to, you know, you only get back what you, you know, give unto the Lord. So give everything you have. Well, here's five bucks. <laughs> That's all I had in my pocket back then. Had those things come to pass? Well, we're, we're rich in other things, but we aren't the millionaires that we were prophesied to have over us. So I, I was privileged to have one, probably one person of all the people that I've run into that I would consider a true prophet of God. And, and she has passed away you know, probably the last two years. But she spoke some things to me that, and, and they shouldn't speak anything that, that you didn't know already. You know, she always said, said, I'm just confirming what God has for your life. You know, this is, you know, and the Spirit of God says, amen. What she said was right on. And those things had come to pass. So, but that's the only person I had. I said, I'm, I'm not a very trusting person to begin with when it comes to those so people. And it can be easily sucked into those type of things because we, you know, one of the things were concerning Trump was we wanted, you know, I know there's some people that are not Trump fans. Praise God for you. We love you too. Hallelujah. But we were so, we wanted him to become and, and believe that, that sometimes we, had, we grabbed on and grasped onto those messages of those people who were saying, didn't we? And here it's a year later and we're still in the same boat. With three more years to go, Lord, come quickly. Hallelujah. And I know God can change things. If I'm going to trust God, I'm not going to trust what they're saying. Hallelujah. And if and what they say is true, it will come to pass. God will make it come to pass. Now, false prophets have been a problem throughout history. Jesus even warned, down, warned of them in Matthew 24, 11, didn't he? What you said. And is uh, talking about the end times again. He said in verse 11, it says, And many prophets, false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. We are seeing that in our lives today. Many false prophets. Hallelujah. And, and, and the funny thing that's happening now, and I just heard a guy saying that, He's, well, he said well, in 70 days things will change again. He said it's before Christmas. We'll see what happens. 
But he said, you know, it's up to you to believe. Why is it up to me? If God confirmed with you the message of God, why do I have to believe what you said for it to come to pass? So in a sense, sense they're saying, it says, if it doesn't happen, it's your fault. Wayne, you didn't believe. So God couldn't move because of your unbelief. Ah, baloney. God can move because God is God. Hallelujah. He doesn't need, need us to. Confirm that. So this is one of the first things I want to talk about, the truth, the prophets. And said, I said, prophets are real. I believe in prophecy. Um, but we have to take warning. What is our ultimate checklist, our truth checker? This. If it goes against this, run from it. And if your spirit says something, and something ain't right here, trust that spirit. It's God's tool. God put that spirit in you for a reason. Now, well, it says it leads you in all truth, doesn't it? Trust it. But we still can be fooled. The Bible talks about if we don't have this in our hearts, if we don't understand his principles and precepts, we can get fooled. It will be a great falling away during that time. The next one I want to talk because it's 2022, and this is something that a lot of people are doing and a lot of churches are doing. And, and I'm not saying it's totally wrong, but we have to be careful of making a rule in our churches. And Proverbs 29, verse 18, it says, When there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, I said, it's 2022. People are always talking, are already talking about their, uh, what do they make, their resolutions through the year, or promises, and churches do it also. They said, this is our, our vision for the year. But, and, and I said, a lot of that ain't wrong, but it, it, you can't use it as your, I guess, your main planning or main focus is that vision. And, and, and again, this scripture, once again, is taken out of context. And I'll explain it as we go on here. We have used this scripture, and I have used this scripture, to support leadership to develop an agenda that everyone needs to help obtain. Now, this word vision means revelation. It's God's revealing revelation to us. This verse is not about a personal, a church, or business vision. Now, businesses have to, I think they call it something else, so they have to have a, like certain principles that they have, guidelines that they're using for their uh, mission statement. And we have a mission statement. You know, unfortunately, a, a church is by, considered by our government as a business. That's why we still, you know, many people don't know that, but we pay taxes. Not on the building, but on those these pews, this equipment back there, that crazy drum set back there. We get taxed on the stuff that's inside the building. We don't get taxed on the building. So we do pay taxes somewhat. Render under Caesar. What is Caesar, I guess you could say. Hallelujah. So the government, you know, we have to have bylaws, and we have to have a mission statement and stuff like that. That's required of a, our government. But it's not required of God. That is man's position on that stuff. This verse is talking about the prophetic revelation of God or receiving communication from God. And we all should, we're filled with the Holy Ghost, we, we should be able to receive communication, um, either through his word or the voice of God. Hallelujah. Amen? Anybody confirm that? Either by dream, revelation, or prophecy. When people you never hear, you never hear when you're talking about this verse, you hear the second part of the verse. Isn't that funny how it is? You always take one particular verse and don't read the verses around it or they take that one verse and don't read the whole verse well again verses and chapters weren't in the original bible everybody know that i didn't make it i mean i'm glad they are because it's a lot easier to memorize i can't remember the whole book you'd have to memorize the whole book of malachi or something to be in there but we got the chapters and verses but that was done by man 
not by God. I think God kind of guided them in that because I like how it's written for us. But they don't take the whole thing. Let's read the second part of that. It says, when there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, the law is what? The old covenant, right? And Jesus, did Jesus come to destroy that law? No. In, ver, in chapter, Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 18, it tells us, Think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophets or the prophets. Again, I mean, he's not saying prophets are evil. I didn't come to destroy them because they prophesied of his coming and how he would be. Think not I come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Now, Jesus is the fulfillment of God's vision. Jesus is the revelation to us, to man. And Deuteron in Revelation 19, 11, 13, 11, 13, remember John 1 says what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word come, come flesh. In Revelation 19, it verifies this, in 19, verses 11 through 13. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, that he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So Jesus is fulfillment of that revelation. Again, we the Bible warns us to add or subtract to this. If you add things, the plagues will be added. If you subtract things from it, your name will be taken from the Lamb's book of life. So we have to be careful. This is the fulfillment of God. We don't need any divine revelation outside of this, do we? I remember a pastor tell me once, uh, or he said it several times, he says, you can't love God more than you love his word because his word is who he is. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word is God. So is it wrong to set goals? Absolutely not. But we have to be careful of them. We should have goals, whether personal or business-wise. Even as, as a church, but the church vision is really found in Matthew 28, 19, isn't it? And verse 20, which tells us what? The Great Commission. Anybody can quote it? Mike? <laughs> Could you quote it? In verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, which his name is Jesus, teaching them to deserve all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That is our vision. That is our revelation. That is the task of the church. Plain and simple. Just go and tell other people about him. There's no reason after we got baptized and got the Holy Ghost, repented of our sins, that we should be here. I wish we weren't sometimes. But the only reason we are left is to tell others and share the gospel of God to others. That is our purpose. And again, everybody is different. Some people are, the Bible even says, some, are, some plant, some water. But Jesus is the ultimate receiver of all that. We have to be careful about making a vision outside of that. And every should, every, uh, see, where am I? And, we, and our, our vision should revolve around that, not some program. I was, I'm never, I was, partly when I was at Parkway, they would bring in, have another speaker come in and try to develop some program that was successful in their church. Nine out of ten times it didn't work. Because it was part of that church's
purpose and vision. It was their vision. It wasn't our vision. So we have to be careful adopting other people's vision or program to try and try and make them work in there. You know, Parkway was a big, their, their main thing was teaching Bible studies. And that's how it grew that church. We'd love to do that here. And we have done it here. But it doesn't seem to be the part of our purpose. I think part of our purpose is, is to teach and instruct you people, us people, how to, how to live for God the best we could. Again, the U.S. government looks at the church as a business, and we shouldn't. It's not a business, and we shouldn't treat it as so. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 tells us what? Trust in the Lord. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct you your paths. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding, and he will direct us. It's God, through his word, directs us. And God has given you us leaders, too. Mike, Bob, me, and you all in here are all part of the body and the ministry of the gospel of Christ. Okay, I think I got some time. Are everybody okay? Mike's saying cut. <laughs> I'm going to just cover, I'll go through this fairly quick because this wasn't, isn't too long. But I want to turn to Hebrews chapter 9, 27. And this is something I've been thinking about for a while. And then um, it just kind of like materialized as, as my thoughts on it were wrong. Yeah, I don't know everything. And I'll admit when I'm wrong on things. And I was wrong on using, and I've used this verse again to, um, and, and you've heard of it Funerals, you've heard them at, when someone passes away, you hear this all the time, don't you? <clears throat> that it was his time. And as it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment. So in our minds, at least in my mind, it was that God had a preconceived date. You were, I was born September 5th, 1958, and that in some time in, in, in the future, there was a, there's a date set that I cannot change. That nothing can change. It's going to happen no matter what. No matter if I get shot, no matter if it was an accident, no matter if I die of old age, well, I'm going to go in the rapture. That's my desire. But that was a thought I had on this particular verse. I don't know if anybody else had that. Because, again, you hear it a lot when someone passes away. It's, well, it's just his time, right? And after thinking and pondering on that, and I said, that isn't right. That's not the God I serve that would have a particular date. And God knows the beginning from the end. He knows the day we will succumb, but he is not the one that appointed the date. It's because of goofy Adam in the beginning took of that tree of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, and from that on, from then that on set on, death entered the world. God didn't bring death. It was because man took a choice. You had a, you have, you had a choice between life and death. He chose death. And because of that, we all are going to succumb to that if the Lord shall tarry. Death, death is something there. We say it was his time or her, her time, but is that what the Scripture bears out? Once again, we are using one verse. Yeah, we'll look at the other verses around it to establish doctrine. And I believe a wrong one at that. Most of this chapter in Hebrews is concerning, referring to the new covenant. If you read the whole chapter, it's talking about the tabernacle. Maybe, and that he fulfilled that Old Testament covenant. covenant. Um, we know how death came into the world. And we all are subject to it and destined for judgment because of it. Let me ask you this. If it's appointed a day, a time that you are to die... Could, would, you, could we blame God for that? Would God be responsible for cancer? Would he be responsible for murder? I said, that's, that sounds whole preposterous to me that, that God would say, you know, well, you're going to die June 1st, 2024, and you're going to be shot. Are you saying God's going to set that up? Well, you always say, well, God can stop it. Yeah, he can, but 
the things that, when, when Adam sinned, on, sinned, sinned, when he ate of the tree of knowledge, he set in motion a world that's full of death, disease, sickness. And again, it's not because of God that we are sick. And it's not because you have a lack of faith that you are sick. It's not because you don't believe in God and trust God that we are sick. It's because this world is a fallen world. Sickness and disease are unfortunately part of it. Work is part of it. We allow work, don't you, Wayne? Well, the Bible tells you you want to, you want to eat. <laughs> Got to work. It's part of the fallen world. It, and uh, as far as I know, as far as I see, we're going to be working in heaven too. And that's okay to me. So, well, who's going to do the dishes from the marriage supper of the Lamb? <laughs> Dana or Tammy? <laughs> Who's going to keep them streets of transparent gold clean? I will. Yeah, amen. I, I, I don't see a heaven that we're not going to be doing, just laying around on a cloud playing our harp. That's not my picture of heaven. It's like, what are we doing? Are we going to, whatever. Yeah. It's going to be a lot better than here, I'll tell you that. Hallelujah. The reward is a lot better than the reward we get. Hallelujah. So when, you, when I really thought about that, I said, well, you know, if I'm saying that there's a point, the, that God has a day appointed, that this, that I used to insert the word God in there. It says that God's responsible for people's death. No, it's not. So the, what he's really saying here is there, there's a, because of Adam, there's death destined for everybody. Mankind. There's death. Let's face it, we can't, what are the two things you can't avoid? Taxes and death. And even after your death, they take your taxes. We can't, you know, unless the Lord comes, the Lord come quickly. So we're all going to meet that day. Most of us didn't even think we'd live this long anyways, right, Mike? <laughs> Amen. So it's not God who has a day assigned for us to die. It's not God that has set a particular time. God didn't make my daughter get cancer. Didn't. It's because of this fallen world. And, and she died of it because of this fallen world. I don't blame God for any of that. If I did, man, I'd be a mess. I'm a mess already, if you ask my wife, but I'm a, a sanctified mess <laughs> by God himself. So he, he's telling us that there is a, a every man will die. And, be, and because of death, because of what Adam did, there will be a judgment. Thank God we, we as the saints of God, are, we're receiving a ju judgment here. We won't appear before the white throne judgment, but there's a white throne judgment to come. In Revelation 20, 11, 15, it talks about that white throne. Eleven. It says, and I saw a great throne, and the him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. You can't, if, without, without the, the first resurrection, this is talking about the second resurrection, without being a part of the first resurrection, and what, there are three parts of the first resurrection, I, I've told, you, told several times before, the first part was what? Jesus. The second part is those that will be at the rapture, and the third are those that are beheaded for the sake of Christ during the tribulation period. There's three parts of the first resurrection. We won't have that judgment, appear before the judgment, but the second resurrection, you will see these. I saw dead, small, and great stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things. And I believe the book of the judgment book is this. If you obeyed the word of God or, or didn't obey the word of God. We're judged out of these books which are written in the books according to their works. And the sieve gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up and the dead were, 
which were in them. So it doesn't matter if you were eaten by a shark. If you were, um, you know, we used to always be concerned about people that got uh, cremated. You know, oh, well, how does God? doesn't matter. God's going to raise you up again at that day of judgment. And, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Oh, that's the judgment to come. Again, not everybody will be cast in the lake of fire. You know, this is the ultimate judge. And if they were written in the Lamb's book of life, they are good. So let's go back to Hebrews chapter 9. And we're going to read the other chapters in there. Again, my, my, I, I'm a pursuer. I think you know by now I'm a pursuer of truth. And, and I'll dig and look at all kinds of information trying to find that out. When I'm not satisfied with an answer, I'm going to look for the answer. And the answer is always found in here. So we're going to go back to verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but unto heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must be often have suffered, he often su have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now since the end of the world hath he appeared, now once in the end of the world, boy, King James sometimes, ah, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment. And let's read that last verse. That's the most important. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Now, we were, were destined to die because of Adam's sin. But because of Christ, we are destined for life and life everlasting. We were once offered to bear the sins of many. And to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin until salvation. Without sin. We are sinful little guys, aren't we? We do stupid, as Brother Mike often says. We still do. And we're still sinners. But when we appear before Christ, we're going to have no sin. He's going to look on us with praise God. As the worship team comes up, hallelujah. Now, I just tackled three of the truths that I think are pertinent in our day and age. And um, there's a lot more truth in the Word of God in there, Mike. And as this, as this year, 2022, goes on, there's a lot of things I, I, I'm hoping to share. I, th I don't think there's time in the day to share everything I want. I'd, I'd love to do a, a creation series again or... Uh, we did a tabernacle series and some of those things in the future. But what, what does the Bible say? Knowledge him in all your ways. Lean on him, lean on him, not your own understanding, and he shall direct your ways. We're going to trust God for that. Hallelujah. So if you're listening to us today or here and you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, we'll fill that tank up. Hallelujah. And if you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Days a day, yeah. You know, the Bible doesn't say you know, only one time. It says tarry one time. And every other time, God is always ready to give. Hallelujah.